How does it strike you when people refer to you as a hidden figure? Well, you know, it's true. Uh, you know, I'll take that, uh, a hidden figure thing. The good news is that the world is hearing about this. His story was almost lost to history. Ed Dwight, the first ever African-American astronaut candidate, nominated by President John F. Kennedy. At the time, we only had 125 black pilots in the entire world, uh, and you had to have an engineering degree, and you had to be under 30. He was 27 at the time. An Air Force captain met all the qualifications and then some. But a segregated America wasn't ready to see a black man in space. I thought it was an error on the part of President Kennedy to appoint one person here. Uh, I, I, I'm, I'm supposed to carry all the load of, of a whole race of people. I should have known about Ed Dwight, that he could have been one of those men walking on the moon. That should have been in my history books, but it wasn't. NASA wanted to show that they were engaged in equality for all. Now in 2024, at 90 years old, Ed's story is front and center. New National Geographic documentary, The Space Race. The film chronicling the largely unseen and untold history of black astronauts. Former NASA astronaut Leela Melvin is one of the film's subjects and is executive producer. We said, look, we got to really get everyone to put their heart and soul into this movie to tell really what happened. Leland was our ambassador to this very tightly knit group of people. The most incredible thing for us really was the access to the to the astronauts and being allowed to be inside their community. There's no experts on the space program or historians that talk for them. It's really their story told in their own words. In the late 1950s and early 1960s, the world was obsessed with the so-called space race between the U.S. and the Soviet Union. But in the backdrop of extraordinary human advancement, America was still tainted by the stain of racism and Jim Crow. But a young, newly elected president was eager to make a change. We choose to go to the moon in this decade and do the other things, not because they are easy, but because they are hard. President Kennedy called the chief of staff and asked him, how long would it take you to make me a black astronaut? And the reply was five years. And Kennedy said, no, I want some stuff on my desk by Friday. And I didn't want to have any part of it in the beginning. I said, no, I've got a very comfortable Air Force career. and I'm flying five airplanes. I'm on the wing staff. I'm, I'm just doing great. But Ed's mother gave her son a talk that would change the course of history. My mom intervened and said, you better do it because here's an opportunity to raise the status of the race. And so that's why I took on this, this, this mission. And I, and I looked at it as a mission. He received an outpouring of love from black America. I'm getting 1,500 letters a day. I'm on the cover of magazines around the world. But his nomination frowned upon even by some within the black community. And they said, number one, I wasn't tall enough. I was Catholic. I wasn't black enough. I was not the model of the Negro race. The force of darkness pretty much had their way. Force of darkness, what do you mean? Reports were being written that black people were incapable of learning enough to fly in space. And they're coming out with reports where I, I was physically uh, and I was intellectually uh, inferior. Ed says one of his toughest opponents was his own commander, American hero Chuck Yeager, the pilot who broke the sound barrier in 1947. He says uh, Kennedy is trying to cram the N-word uh, uh, down our throats and we don't want him to graduate. And he gave me scenarios about them putting me into orbit and leaving me up there. He, he, and these were real things as this guy was saying to me. Yeager, who died in 2020, reportedly denied Ed's claims. The isolation Ed says he experienced, paralleling that of one of his contemporaries, mathematician Katherine Johnson, whose story was portrayed in the Oscar-nominated film, Hidden Figures. There's no bathroom for me here. What do you mean there's no bathroom for you there here? There is no bathroom. There are no colored bathrooms in this building or any building outside the West Campus, which is half a mile away. If Katherine Johnson hadn't had to walk so far to use the bathroom, would we have gotten to the moon faster? Because all that time walking back and forth, she could have been solving problems and calculating, and maybe we would have got there faster. If Ed had been given the opportunity to be that person on the moon. Ed's space dreams would ultimately be dashed in 1963 after not being picked for NASA's astronaut class. 
A month later, his biggest ally, President Kennedy, was shot and killed in Dallas. When Kennedy was killed in, in 1963, he was basically booted out of the program. The space race also explores the years after Ed's candidacy, including the emergence of space themes in black culture. When people think of the space race, they typically don't think about Afrofuturism. Outer space explored in the lyrics and dress of Earth, Wind, and Fire. In Parliament, Funkadelic. Watching this spaceship rise off the stage while this music is playing in these funky boots and glasses and shiny uniforms. That was kind of putting this, this space thing in me when I didn't even know it. And Nichelle Nichols moving the culture forward in Star Trek. Nichelle Nichols just turned on so many people to the potential of space and was working for NASA as a consultant to get women and minorities to apply to become astronauts. This is your NASA. And history would catch up 20 years later. Colonel Guy Bluford would become the first African-American man ever to launch into space in 1983. How did it hit your spirit when men like Colonel Bluford became uh, astronauts? They kept telling me all the time I was in the, uh, in the program under consideration, you're 20 years too soon. And it turns out that it was almost 20 years to the month that Colonel Bluford went up. Uh, and, and so I said in my brain, yeah, they were right. My job was to open that conversation. That conversation continuing today. There are now 17 African-American astronauts who've been to space with others waiting in the wings. Ed ultimately found his place in the world following his Air Force career, becoming a renowned sculptor, inspired by figures of history who were hidden to him in his youth in segregated Kansas City. I had a white education. I had never heard of Harriet Tubman until I was 42 years old. And uh, Frederick Douglass and uh, George Washington Carver. And I started sculpting. I was all telling the story, 132 black memorials and public art pieces around this country that I did. Now that everyone knows who you are, and your mama always knew, <laughs> uh, what do you want your legacy to be? I was a guy that caused people to stop and think about who they are, what they have to offer the world. On top of all that stuff, he was really a nice guy, and that's really important. Our thanks to Byron. The Space Race is streaming now on Disney Plus and Hulu. Hi everyone, George Stephanopoulos here. Thanks for checking out the ABC News YouTube channel. If you'd like to get more videos, show highlights, and watch live event coverage, click on the right over here to subscribe to our channel, and don't forget to download the ABC News app for breaking news alerts. Thanks for watching.